really cool. Right. What we Tomorrow have, I have to leave. I don't know how you can figure that thing now. How long have we got? How long have we got? Okay. Yeah? yeah? Okay. Three days? Yeah. <laughs> right, so what we do is we, we integrate with sport information management systems, okay? Obviously, depending on where you are in the world, will depend on whether we do actually integrate with sport information management system, but it's something that has an API available that we can integrate, okay? We might just have to develop a new API, okay? So we pull all of this information through, so we pull through uh, the, the picture of the pupils and key information about the pupils. So in the UK it's mandatory. Teachers have to do seating plans as part of their learning plan, okay? They have to have, or they have to be aware, which pupils are pupil premium, gifted and talented, in care, SEM for special educational needs, free school meals, and EAL as English as a language. So we pull through all that information, mandatory for schools. On the flip side of the cards, okay, this is stuff that we allow teachers to choose. So the front of the cards is mandatory information. So this is an English lesson, so we have information about the level of reading, what their last test level was, all that kind of good stuff, okay? And again, we pull that from the school information management system. So, what that actually allows us to do, is it allows us to rearrange pupils. So, for instance, if I have a special educational needs coordinator in my class, okay, I want to bring together all of my special educational needs pupils. So I'm going to click cluster, optimise seating chart, and I'll flip the cards. So SEN, they're now all grouped together. Okay? So, if I want to also do some peer-to-peer -peer learning, so want a high achiever sat next to a lower achiever, so as the higher achiever is going to help the lower achiever, we can rearrange and I'll just do it with... Uh, you can do it with whatever's on the card, so I'll do it with reading aids, so disperse, optimise seating, flip the card. So you can see higher achievers are now set to lower achievers. You can do you only have that, those two to... Can that take uh, information from an uh, assessment tool or something? Great. Yeah, yeah, from an assessment tool. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I will show you that in one second, how yeah, we okay, do that on just... that side of things. So what we can also do here is if we cluster now, so this will cluster our higher achievers and our lower achievers, and I'll even, I'll make groups in this occasion as well. So we're going to make five groups of six pupils. So you'll have different groups of high achievers and groups of low achievers. So you can get on with different work depending on which group you're actually working with. There, okay? Financial return to class. So you were saying there about um, targets. Okay? If I click this here, English end of year target, what this shows us, anybody in green is on or above their target. Anybody in yellow is below target. Anybody in red is severely below target. So the pupils in red are more likely the pupils that me as a teacher, I need to concentrate on most to try and... I'm obviously not a very good teacher. I've got a lot of pupils who are on the target. Is there. that on the subject level or...? or on, on a grading level. The way that we do it, in, in the UK anyway, uh, school information management systems have um, multiple aspects. And one aspect will be their uh, expected grade at the end of the year. Yeah. Um, in one in subject? Aspect, yes, in one subject. Yeah. We can do it for any subject, yeah. whatever subject you want. You divide it into different uh, skills in the subject, because we have a lot of learning goals. Yeah, so, so like in English, we've got a reading age, we have comprehension, we okay, so have you writing, can, uh, so yeah, you can do that. As long as you've got that information, yeah. we can do it like that for you, no problem. So what we do is your, your current and your predicted grade, your end grade, expected grade, it looks for uh, logarithms that go well over my head, figures out whether those people are on target or not, okay? So, <laughs> that literally is the, oh, and we can move pupils around like this as well if you want to just move pupils around. Um, we can as well, right, we have some pupils here, SEM there. So, uh, Jace is like saying, real fun for decoding. So we can actually have text-based information in there as well. As long as that information is in your school information management system, we can pull it out. And we can have things like this. Lewis is hard of hearing, so sit at the front of the class. So, what I can do now is I can sit at the front of the class, but I can also pin into that desk. So the only 
way, if we go back to the rearranged pupils, the only way we can now move Lewis is by manually dragging and dropping. Okay? Alternatively, we can confirm at the front, so as now, however we rearrange it, we will always be on the front row somewhere. Okay? <laughs> so that's the seating side of things, pretty much. And we also have as well, if you want to ask pupil or a random pupil a question, you can turn this on or off. Click random pupil and then either correct, incorrect, or almost correct. correct. Okay. So we then come to the behaviour piece. Okay? Now this is a bit I get quite excited about, I love this bit. I do get quite excited so this is Right, so I click on Tiffany, <coughs> I award a behaviour point. Okay? So I'll go through that slowly for you. These are completely customizable so as they fit exactly what the school's doing. So we're not there to say you should be using this behavior type, it's up to the schools what they use. So Soria, okay, we call it whatever we want, however many points. Does it require a note from the teacher? Does it require an hour?